Deep down in us, we find what makes us function, what makes us human, our proteins. And now, we see them like we've never seen them before. Neurotransmitters are chemicals that send messages between neurons. One of these is dopamine, a transmitter responsible for, among other things, our reward system and motor function. Usually, the dopamine neurons in our brains deliver their messages unhindered. But when we're struck with Parkinson's disease, these signals are lost, resulting in slowness, uncontrolled tremors, and stiffness. Within the Human Protein Atlas project, all of the different proteins in the human body are being mapped out. And on the HPA Open Access website, researchers can study the proteins present in our brains. This is now being taken to a whole new level where researchers can examine the proteins in 3D, for example, in specific regions of the brain. This is a brain that is uh, working like it's supposed to. And um, here is Substantia nigra, a region of the brain that is very important for controlling movements and reward. These three-dimensional images allow neurologist Per Svenning Sun to explore the brain in a completely new way. Here we see staining of tyrosine hydroxylase, a protein critical for the synthesis of dopamine. Released dopamine is acting via dopamine receptors to exert its action. It can then be reused and taken up by the dopamine transporter. Dopamine is degraded by two enzymes, monoamine oxidase and catechol methyltransferase. All these absolutely necessary molecules are proteins. But in the case of Parkinson's disease, the dopamine neurons involved in the regulation of our movements degenerate and die. Persons with Parkinson's disease develop slowness of movements, stiffness and uh, tremor. These symptoms can be treated with uh, therapies that restore dopamine. However, the treatment that we have today does not cure the disease. Some dopamine neurons are more likely to die in Parkinson's disease. There is also some evidence that the pathology starts at the nerve terminals rather than in the cell bodies, and this can be visualized using this technology. This way, we can exactly see which parts that are first affected and get ideas of how we can rescue such damage. When we explore the world in new ways, we discover new things about us, about life itself. And now we see our proteins like we've never seen them before. <laughs>